So we're interested in transcriptional regulatory circuitry in humans and in some animals like mice. And transcriptional regulatory circuitry is really composed of the DNA, the genome, and the components that are responsible for the production of a working copy of the genome in the form of RNA from each of the 24,000 or so protein coding genes in the genome. So transcriptional regulatory circuitry is really the genome, the components that then make an RNA copy, and how they all work together across the entire genome to produce this circuitry. The background to this is there has been a long history of studying gene control in bacteria and other small experimental systems where we've come to understand that proteins called transcription factors bind to specific sites on the genome and they turn on the gene. They basically recruit the transcription apparatus, which is RNA polymerase and its cofactors, and make a working copy of that portion of the DNA in the form of RNA that's then translated into a protein. There are other kinds of genes. There are genes that make RNAs that are not going to be useful for proteins, and they can have other functions. And there are also about 24,000 non coding genes that, uh, that make these RNA species. So in some, there may be as many as 50,000 genes, half of which code for proteins, half of which code for RNAs that have various functions. Understanding how in any one cell, only a fraction of those genes are on, which makes that cell, give it, gives it its identity, is the problem that we're really going to try and solve in the future. So the, the background, the uh, experimental systems have told us about the components that are involved, but they've not led us to a model that explains how the half of the genes that are turned on in any one cell, how that actually works. What we've discovered so far is that there are a small set of master transcription factors in every cell type. They may be only three or four different factors that are produced in abundance that go to about half of those 50,000 genes and turn them on. And for each cell type, it's a different set of transcription factors. The transcription factors that do this are so powerful that if we produce them in a set of, say, fibroblast cells, we can cause those cells to be reprogrammed into new cells. And that reprogramming process which was described here by Shinya Yamanaka, is one that's going to be quite valuable for regenerative medicine. So we've learned what the master transcription factors are for perhaps 20 different cell types, and our goal is to learn what they are for all cell types that may be medically important. Uh, in the future, we're also going to uh, attempt to actually generate those cell types so that uh, in regenerative medicine, we can have the possibility of taking a patient's skin cells, taking the master transcription factors for perhaps a, a heart cell, a cardiomyocyte, inducing those fibroblasts to become cardiomyocytes, and they will be personalized cells that can be used for the repair of a damaged heart in that individual. Our contributions to this have been to develop a technology that uh, allows us to monitor where proteins bind across the entire genome. And in doing so, we can follow the transcription factors, the exact sites that they occupy, which are called enhancers, and then identify how those enhancers connect with the target genes that are turned on in each cell. So we can monitor across all 24,000 protein coding genes, 24,000 non coding genes, exactly how the master transcription factors bind to those genes and turn them on. We're also trying to understand exactly how the DNA loops from the sites of the transcription factors bind on the enhancers to their target genes. And to do that, we have to deploy technologies that allow us to identify those looping structures in the DNA. These technologies include um, 
DNA-DNA interaction assays, for example, something called CHIA-PET. And the results tell us then which enhancers interact with which genes, and we can build a model of the entire gene expression system of the cell based on that information. Out of this, we hope to understand how the control of gene expression across the genome is connected to the control of the structure of each chromosome and consequently how these, these structures are determined by um, the gene expression program of the cell. In the future, we'd like to try to solve what we call transcriptional regulatory circuitry for all cells, or at least uh, for medically relevant cells, because understanding that will lead us to understand better the processes that go awry in disease. So part of the complexity of this problem is that a human being has 30 trillion cells. There are hundreds of different cell types that make up those 30 trillion, and we'd like to understand this circuitry in each cell. In each cell, we have transcription factors that are involved in this control, and they have buddies that are, we call cofactors. The transcription factors and the cofactors work together with chromatin regulators. Those chromatin regulators come in different forms. They come in the form of nucleosome remodeling complexes that will move nucleosomes around. They come in the form of histone modifying enzymes that make chemical modifications to the histones. And all of these things, the transcription factors, the cofactors, the chromatin regulators, are working in a collaborative concert to turn on each individual gene or to help maintain some genes in an off state. So now we have this complexity of trying to describe across the entire genome how transcription factors, their cofactors, chromatin regulators operate at all genes in each cell type across hundreds of cell types across an organism with 30 trillion cells. So we take some of the technologies that we've developed to understand how proteins interact with the genome and control this gene expression program. And we have to develop computational tools to integrate all of this information. And the type of information that's integrated includes where proteins bind, uh, the sets of genes that are then expressed based on RNA data. Um, there's data that reflects where the portions of the genome, for example, at enhancers interact with their target genes. And all of this information ultimately needs to be integrated, not in a static way, but in a dynamic way so that we can see transcription factor binding to form enhancers, the, all the proteins they're interacting with, and then the genes that get turned on and turned off. Uh, so it's a tremendous computational problem that involves very large data sets.